And uh, I just got start with the first slide, is this one. It's, it's a wake-up call, because uh, we've seen so many inspiring speeches today that it's a wake-up call because we have to rethink the way we do innovation management. And maybe the title isn't so inspiring or new, but we have to do something about it. And the reason for that is I'm going to explain you first what is happening with our world. And then I will explain you why so many organizations and managers are in the biggest shit they've ever seen. So the first thing is, if we look to the world, it has changed. And I was telling I was 57, but I was born in 56. And I was, live, I was born in, an, in a stage of information shortage. We couldn't learn at home. We didn't have internet. We were 2D smarts. We were smart in a time period which was flat. We had to go to school to learn. Can you imagine? We had to go to school to learn. So we had to go to school to learn. We had a degree and then we went to work. And today I'm really jealous on children because they were born in an information society, an information explosion. And today, they are not 2D smarts, but they are 3D smarts. And 3D smarts are born in an information luxury. The moment they come at home, they jump into the information. They, they become smart. And all depends on their passion. If the passion is zero, the information is zero. <laughs> if you are passionate about what you do, then you are all interested in information about what you do. But suppose you are passionate about evolution then you are connected to everybody in the world, then you are social active, then you find all the information you need. And this is the quote I said, this is Switch 3D, we're going to a new time frame. And the quote I say, the information you gather reveals your passion. If you can't find anything on the internet, then your passion is zero. If you are not allowed to go to the internet from your boss, then your passion is zero. Then you get a burnout. So, whatever you do is, it's changing. And what it's doing now, this global innovation wave is powered by information and 3D smarts. And if you look to this, information is just available. And if you're a 3D smart, passionate in evolution, you jump in and then you're bright, which is the topic of this session. You become bright. Your brain becomes a light bulb. And it's creative. And then you need to add a little bit entrepreneurship. And this is happening today. A lot of people who are passionate about evolution jump into the information flow, become creative, become entrepreneurs, and that's innovation. And there are no secrets anymore. They share the information and the amount of information increases. There are no speed limit. And this is happening today faster and faster and faster and faster. And for this session, I made a new quote. Information disturbs the order of incompetence. You got it? A lot of incompetent people don't know anymore what to do. And how do you recognize incompetent people? They throw up a lot. <laughs> These are the most organizations. They are fine. They are looking for a new balance. Or this one. They don't know anymore. It's management malpractice. You have all these managers coming from the 2D age, knowing what is best for us, but they don't know what to do anymore. Or this one, stress and burnout. <laughs> A lot of 2D smarts are just laying on their back, don't know, don't know what to do anymore. So we have to do something about it. We are facing one of the biggest struggles in our history, and this is we have to reinvent innovation. We have to go to conflict-based innovation. And in order to explain that, I will give you this picture. In 2D, with 2D smarts, we use 2D information. So this means 2D creativity. And what is 2D creativity? It's nothing. It's just doing better what you did for 100 years. And what do you need for that? You need 2D entrepreneurs. And you know what a 2D entrepreneur looks like? It's like a bank. You only get money if you have proven that you will be successful. This is a business plan. A business plan is for, and I know it's a very ugly English word, but it's for pussies. <laughs> so in our 2D time frame, we had 2D smarts looking for the 2D information and go to 2D entrepreneurs. And so this means that we are coming from a consensus-based model and consensus-based improvement. And this is unsustainable. You can't. 
All these people created all the problems we are facing today. Look at the earth. All the questions about unsustainability is caused by incompetent people. <laughs> and now our kids have to solve our problems. <laughs> so if we go into 3D, if we have so much information, and I really get a kick out of young people who show 3D smart being. In evolution, if you see the kid with a 3D printer, I start crying. There is hope. <laughs> but these children need 3D entrepreneurs who say, yes, we believe in you. We give you the resources. But if you do this, you can't understand these kids or adults anymore because they have these Conflict, conflicting ideas, nobody understands, and then they need money for something you didn't prove it will be uh, um, profitable. So this is really a conflict-based innovation process. So what we need now in this time frame, in order to, to solve all the solutions, is guts and glory. No guts, no glory. And we are in the midst of this change. So if we look into that, then we have, and this is what I learned 15 years ago, uh, we have to learn from the jungle. And I heard a story 20 years ago in the States from a guy. He said, does anybody know the source of biodiversity in the jungle? And a lot of scientists thought it was coming from the middle of the jungle because you have so many different plants and animals and they cross and then you have a new species. And uh, today, uh, a new generation of uh, scientists says, no, 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 that, that's not where the biodiversity started. The biodiversity started at the edge. And at the edge, that's where the ecosystem, the forest, meets other ecosystems. Today, this is what we call open innovation. So in order to innovate, you have to exchange information with other passionate people all over the world. And then new ideas are formed. Taxis are replaced by Uber. <laughs> right? So what happens then is, you have these two ecosystems. And in the jungle, you have very 3D smart monkeys, brown monkeys. And they look information and they share information with red fish from the oceans, two different ecosystems. This is possible with Google Translate. So they start talking with each other. <laughs> they start talking with each other. And suddenly the brown monkey says, I got an idea. And he calls it the red monkey. It doesn't exist in the jungle. It's so new, right? So he runs into the jungle and he said, I got a red monkey. I have an idea. And you know what happens? It's shut. <laughs> this is happening always. And you know by who is it shot? It is shot by the red monkey hunters. <laughs> these are all these people who don't have passion in evolution, don't have access to information, and don't even have a talent to do what they do. So, and this is the problem today. So, I've been thinking while I was working, because I worked for a very long time in a very big company, about innovation. And that's why I made the conclusion, innovation is a result of a confrontational idea that I survived the conflict. And in the 2D world, with 2D organizations and 2D banks, it's very hard to let the red monkey grow. In that world, this is an endangered species. So, what do we have to do? So I've been thinking about how can we create innovation based on conflicts instead of consensus, because that's what we have to do. If we can't succeed in this, we can't go to a sustainable world. So if you think about that, I have two things. Never underestimate the power of stupid people in large groups. <laughs> yeah. You have to do something about it. And the second thing is, Never go with donkeys. <laughs> if somebody says, I don't believe in this red monkey, then you have to say, you're not part of the team. <laughs> in 2D, you would say, oh, you not agree with the, with the idea. Just join the team because we need consensus. But that doesn't work anymore. In 3D, you will have so many confrontational ideas from smart people who are very bright. It doesn't work. So you have to say, you're not part of the team. He doesn't know what happens. This demands courage. This demands 3D politics. <laughs> this demands, you, how can you become an innovative region if you're not able to do this? So if you're thinking about it, I was thinking about, but how do you do, how do you organize innovation in 3D? 
And that's what I call red monkey politics. By the way, the book is free downloadable, shareable, multiply. Red monkey politics is a kind of organic evolution. If you have a red monkey, it's created by creators. And in this world, we will have a lot of ideas, a lot of red monkeys coming from people who have passion, talent, passion evolution. 3D printing is one of them. But we will be, there will be so much. And the next thing you have to find is pioneers. And pioneers are passionate and talented people who say, this is something I won't get working. It, it really solves a lot of issues. I want to be part of the team. I want to give my passion and talent to this team. I want to incubate this idea. And that's the reason why I put this thing on it. This is open innovation. And that's the reason why we see today new words. Crowdsourcing. Crowdfunding. But crowdcasting. Crowdcasting bring people to the team. This is 3D management. How can you get it together with people who come from their passion and talent to make it work? This is the end of banks. This, this is, this is uh, Kickstarter. This is whatever. This is what we are inventing now. We are inventing a new world based on information sharing. And this will give a lot of ideas. So, and then after a while, the followers will come. The followers that are the people, when, once you have an idea, the first question a follower asks is, does it work? <laughs> is it proven? That's a scientist. No, they have to wait. But once the pioneers have to make it work, then it works, and then the followers will join. And then the last party is a settler. And the settler is the guy who wants to shoot it. You know what he's going to say once it works? He's going to say, I was always against it, but I believed in it. <laughs> he will change. So this is going to happen. We are creating a world based on information luxury where people who are 3D smarts will start creating all these weird ideas. And we have to accept this, that whenever idea I launch in this group, these three groups, four groups will be available. No consensus. You have to go for conflicts. So most people fight ideas simply because they can't envision it. That's something I learned. People don't resist change because they resist change. Most people resist change because they can't see it. They have to see it. So we need people who are heroes. And for doing that, we need 3D respect. And these are my last slides. What is 3D respect? We are coming, we are going to a world where our consensus model has to be changed into a respectful conflict model. This means that followers and settlers have to respect creators and pioneers because next time, maybe they have an idea. And then they don't like that their red monkey is shot. And if you don't have creators and pioneers, it doesn't work. And creators and pioneers should respect followers and settlers because maybe next time they don't understand. And you need followers and settlers because who is going to do it once it works? And if this respect doesn't start to exist, we can't survive. And this is my message to you. We need 3D heroes. And for doing that, I developed this sticker. You have to break for red monkeys. So put it on your car. I thank you for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Stas. Thank you.